I'm here with my friends Bernadine Dorn and Bill Ayers. We're talking about the Gaza Freedom March experience that they just had. Uh, in case you tuned in late, uh, there was a number of people from around the world kind of uh, bringing a humanitarian aid mission to Gaza through Egypt and between the United States, Israel, and Egypt that uh, march was blocked in many ways. Uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about how uh, people eventually got into Gaza on this event. Well, we did, there were a couple of delegations that did get in from our group of 1,400 uh, there were constant meetings with the United, with the, the U.S. Embassy. We kept trying to push them. We Let had. Let me just ask: Are these old? Are these Bush appointees? Or are these new people with Obama? I have no idea. Okay. My, was, assumption, my, my new, assumption is they're the new people. But you know, one of the things that I think you know that's consistent is that between administrations, nobody actually has changed or or brought a new vision of what could happen in the Middle East. And that's a tragedy, really, because I think a lot of people hoped that this was a moment when people could come to their senses and try to have a more balanced and a more reasonable view of what suffering is. And it's not, you know, particular to Israel or particular to Palestine. It's, it's, it's suffering is suffering. You know, one of the things I was thinking, parenthetically, is that, you know, we saw this great outpouring in the last couple of weeks around Haiti. And that shows us something about the people of the world and about us. Yeah. We, don't, we, we see that and we're horrified and we, we want to contribute, we want to make a difference, we want to help. The tragedy is that our eyes are sealed shut about many, many parts of the world. Haiti was suffering before two weeks ago, before the, the earthquake. And why weren't we paying attention then? And why was all this unnecessary death you know, and, and suffering going to happen? Well, the same is true in Gaza, if people knew, if, if, if Americans knew in large numbers what occupation looks like, I think people would be resistant to it, would be uh, involved in some solidarity attempt to reach out to these folks who are unemployed, without health care, without basic freedoms, without basic um, you know, services and needs. So that's what, what our attempt was. Um, but we did, through a series of meetings, demonstrations, pushing. Um, some of the leadership from Code Pink did meet with Susan Mubarak, who is the, the First Lady of Egypt. She agreed to a concession of letting a couple of buses go. Uh, this created a great, great debate and kind of pandemonium among, among us. Sounds like the old days it when was all very the much people who sorted for the same cause were battling each other. Well, and, and it, it happens, of course. And we kept trying to, uh, all of us, I think, kept trying to say, let's keep our eyes on Gaza. We're not actually fighting with each other. We're not actually fighting with Egypt. But in the end, something like 100 folks did, in fact, get on buses and did, in fact, deliver humanitarian aid. And then the, the delegation led by George Galloway, which was coming from a different direction, uh, the, the Scottish MP, uh, they brought in supplies, I think, a week later. So we did, you know, there was the material supplies part of it, but the larger part was, to, was what's happening right now in our conversation here. We want to use this experience to draw attention to Gaza. There is a meeting February 7th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, and the progressives always choose a big sports day to have well, an important well, event. Well, look, look. This they is do. actually, I know. It's a warm-up to the game. It's, it's a pre-game. I'm calling the pre -game it pre -game the pre-game <laughs> the pre <-game> Palestinian <laughs> warm-up. Um, the, the Super Bowl starts at 5.30. Our meeting is at 2 o'clock. Okay. But it's an opportunity. I tell you, it, it, it's at uh, 1400 West Hubbard which is the AFT, the American Federation of Teachers Organizing Offices, 1400 West Harbor, 2 o'clock, February 7th. But it's an opportunity to meet and talk to Ali Abu Nima, who was on the delegation with us, who's a brilliant Chicagoan, Palestinian, um, who's written a brilliant book called One Country. And Ali will be there, uh, we will be there. Uh, Peter Sporn, who uh, was with the medical committee in the West Bank over the Christmas holidays, will be there. And I think it'll be an, a good opportunity to go deeper into learning about and then spreading the word about what's the real situation in Gaza and why the United States plays such a pivotal role. And it's therefore our responsibility to rise up angry. Give, give us that uh, date and time and place one more time. For it's this February, February 7th, 2 o'clock. PM, 1400 West Hubbard, 
plenty of time to get back to your Super Bowl party or your halftime party. But it's an opportunity, as I say, to meet Ali Abu Nima, who is really one of the most brilliant uh, commentators on Palestine and Palestinian issues today.